Well, with exploration into possible lifetimes, we discover a basis in another lifetime. How does this work? Well, we think that in the psychoplasm, which as I described it earlier, has both physical predispositions, just like our genetic predispositions in many areas, uh, physical and emotional and creative and psychological, interpersonal, ability to get along with other people. And so when you have this kind of a package and there is some, uh, something out of balance in a previous lifetime, it was not resolved. In fact, a lot of these lifetimes ended in a premature death or, or some violent uh, ending or, or ended in uh, uh, death after a period of despair and giving up on life. And that surfaces again here. So what I would suggest is that in our effort to maintain balance in our health in this lifetime, when there are problems that are not obviously cause and effect uh, phenomenon in this current life, I mean, you know, if I get flu f from you and I come down with a flu, I mean, we don't have to go to a past life to, to deal with that. Or, or if I'm, uh, you know, in a deprivation period of, from food and so forth, you know, we don't need to look at past lives. But if symptoms occur uh, without uh, seeming physical or environmental antecedents to this pre uh, present lifetime, then I think it's very useful to look back into previous lives. And in my own case, uh, as a young child, early teenager, I had a terrible problem with barnacle asthma. I was suffering every night. It was I couldn't get a breath. Uh, I, I thought I was going to die. And uh, I felt that I uh, was trapped in some way. I didn't know how to explain it. And years later, uh, after the asthma had completely gone and disappeared when I left my home and went out on my own, uh, I began to look at the past life model and realize that I had had a past life with some sort of uh, enclosed experience, whether I was deliberately uh, smothered and, and, and tortured in some way, or whether I was caught in a uh, collapse in a cave or a, a cavern in a mine. I'm not sure about the details, but I know from the memories and the uh, emotions that were c connected to ex re-experiencing those memories, it, it, it just made it very clear that what I was doing I apparently ended a lifetime uh, in that agonizing way that I was repeating as a 10 and 11, 12 year old child of suffering, fearing that I was smothering to death and couldn't get my last breath. And after that, I have had absolutely no symptoms in the last, you know, I won't tell you how many years, <laughs> between 40 and 50. Uh, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, it's a personal example, and, and I'm not saying that all such symptoms can be found in past lives. I mean, it, that's, that would be foolish. We can't prove that. But we have enough evidence from so many different therapists who use different uh, techniques, whether they're a Jungian analyst or whether they are a uh, past life regression therapist or whether it's just an ordinary clinical psychologist counseling uh, and discovering these uh, connections. So many people have found those examples that I think it's important. So the way I talk about the psychoplasm legacy, uh, I talk about it uh, in the biggest sense uh, that if we understand our past life legacies, we will understand why we're predisposed to think the way we think. I mean, whether we're a big picture person or a nitpicking person, whether we are an introvert or an extrovert, whether we are an artistic personality versus a, a service personality or scientific personality. You know, in this experiment, we've developed a lot of different scales to measure where we fit on these scales. Uh, and a part of that package is our emotional states, which are very important in our physical states. And so looking at it as a package and, and looking for uh, a synthesis that gives us a healthy balance, uh, we can do that without considering past lives, and I think it works for a lot of people. But I think it would be a deeper uh, 
sense of self-awareness if we begin to take into account the possibility of a previous lifetime that we've inherited and brought forward. It doesn't mean, it's just like the geneticists say to now, just because you have gene XYZ, you're going to get this form of cancer. They now know that it's not predictive. It's only a predisposition. You may get it if other things come into play. Well, the same thing happens with past life legacies. It's only a predisposition. It may have a significant influence in this lifetime, or it might not. But it's worth considering that possibility. It's worth considering uh, doing what we're calling in the reincarnation experiment a process of self-exploration in terms of discovering for oneself uh, the possibility of past life influences. I think it's even probably more important, frankly, to think about your past life legacy in terms of looking forward in this lifetime, in terms of the uh, projecting that we do about ourselves, uh, our aspirations, our priorities, because so much of our physical health is a function of our uh, priorities and our use of our time and our creative energies and our endeavors. Uh, being used in a balanced way and it, when we're out of balance in terms of our creative and mental and emotional states we're, get, we're going to get out of balance in our physical states. Uh, so from my point of view if we can develop a general sense of the kind of trajectory that our soul genome or psychoplasm as you prefer uh, is on we have a sense of priorities, we have a sense of of uh, devoting our energies to things that are really consistent and congruent with our core identity. And uh, when we do that, I think we are likely to make choices in terms of the use of our time, of taking care of our bodies, of taking care of our own priorities and interests, that it will be a valuable aid to maintaining self-balance uh, uh, self-awareness in this particular lifetime. Uh, I think that uh, uh, when we have a full sense of a, a, a total organism and we understand that whether you are a one-celled organism or a human or a planet or a solar system, there has to be this balance and uh, we can get sidetracked so easily without a sense of self and to me past life uh, uh, information and we've developed a little program that we call past life based coaching to help people to understand the path they're on and to sort of keep on it and uh, mental health leads to good physical health and physical health leads to creative activities that are satisfying and fulfilling and it's just creating a whole positive process of self-actualization Really, to conclude what we've been talking about, uh, I, I think it's important to put this in the bigger picture. We're not talking about just individual reincarnation. We're talking about species reincarnation. And if we, as individuals and as what we call soul cohorts, uh, souls that might have known each other in other lifetimes, working together this in this lifetime, are not in soul, soul cohorts, but all of us are on this common journey of developing a multiple lifetime uh, legacy for the universe. If we have that in mind, and then we begin to understand that really health at the individual level is dependent on the health of the species. And so it puts us into a bigger context where we are interacting with others, not only to maintain our own individual health, but to maintain the health of the community and obviously for the world at large.